December 4th, 2016, Chuck and Dave on Spot Photography, here interviewing Bishop Gregory Tucker. Dave of Chuck and Dave on the Spot Photography, interviewing Bishop Gregory Tucker. So Bishop, how long have you been in the ministry? I've been in ministry now since 1978. The ministry started in May of 1978. Okay, um, who influenced you to get into the ministry? Well, I was influenced by the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit uh, had uh, moved upon me. I've uh, been a, a young man and uh, trying to find direction for my life. God saved me. You know, he saved me. He uh, saved me back in, uh, I actually got saved in 1965. I got filled with the Holy Spirit when I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And then I backslid, but in 1974, under the leadership of uh, Thomas P. Butler, uh, my, my, my pastor, uh, I got reclaimed back to the Lord. And then later on, God called me in, uh, into the ministry. And when, then later on, you know, in 19, four years later, then I, I became a pastor. So, Bishop, what's your reason for doing the recording? Well, we, we um, wanted to come on uh, Queen's uh, Television Network because we wanted to the ministry to to be exposed. You know, I've been here a while, but we we've never been on television. I've been on radio, uh, WGBB twelve forty uh, AM uh, radio, but never on television. So, I just thank God for the opportunity to be able to you know come on. We'll be coming on. Uh, every uh, second Sunday, starting in January, coming on channel 79 at 11 a.m., and then every second Thursday at 10:30 uh, p.m. on channel number 56. Um, that deals with Time Warner Cable, RCN, and Files. So if they have Verizon Files in Queens, but only in Queens, if I have Verizon Files in Queens, uh, R or C N or, or Time Warner, they could be able to pick us up at that particular time. So, so the gospel could, be, you know, the gospel is the good news, and people need to hear the good news. You know, so many we hear so much bad news, but they need to hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what brought me in. That's what got me off drugs. That's what got me delivered and saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, because I heard somebody. Uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're joined now by First Lady Tucker. Well, I'm so happy my wife is here. Uh, my wife is, uh, thank God for it. We've been married for about 40 years. Uh, it'll be 41 years, uh, February the 7th, of 2017. And uh, she's been right by my side in ministry, and uh, she plays an important role here. She's She's the uh, co-pastor with me here at the church. Also, she's the church administrator, helping me carry out the affairs of the church. And uh, um, First Lady, co-pastor, Virginia Tucker. Uh, I think it's a wonderful idea um, of taking the, uh, the church on TV. Uh, there's a lot to be learned. Um, I think we uh, are broadening our horizon and you know there are other there's so much stuff to be learned um, so many things that can be um, be taught um, on television uh, we it is a media that is very important that people can now see um, what what the church is doing and I, I thank God for this opportunity for one way to be able to uh, be exposed to the uh, television ministry This time, we're going to go before the throne of grace. Amen. Our most gracious and heavenly Father, yeah. truly we are so blessed to say to you, thank you again. Hallelujah. Thank you for this great day that you have given us, Lord. We're not taking it for granted. We thank you, Lord, how you did let us rise this morning, yet clothed within our right minds, having the use and activities of our limbs. God, we're not taking these things as short. Amen. But we're taking them as being great. Lord, we thank you, God, for this day that thou hast given us.
It's a great day. We thank you, Lord God, how you have looked upon us during troubled times, God. We thank you, God, you are prayer answering, God. Yes. Lord, we say thank you, Lord. Yes. Many things that we have desired, God, you have given, hallelujah. That what we haven't received that we've asked for, we know you are telling us to wait, God. Yes. We are waiting on you, Lord Jesus, knowing that you do nothing before time. God, we are so grateful to you. We ask you, Lord, continue to remember each and every family that's here today. God, we ask you to bless them, Lord God. Many are facing difficulties, Lord. Sicknesses, trouble, Lord Jesus. But we know that thou are able to come to the rescue, Lord. We don't want our faith to be hollow, but we want our faith to be full. Lord, because we believe in you, hallelujah, according to your word. You say, ask, Lord God. And it will be given. That we are going to do today. We're going to ask you, continue to be our merciful God. God, we ask you for direction, Lord. We ask you to instruct us. Help us to be helpers in the vineyard. Lord God, help us, Lord God, to be those that can stand beside the pastor, Lord. Lift up his arms, Lord Jesus, so that preaching can be made easy. There are those that's in various hospitals, Lord Jesus. Bodies racking in pain. But, oh God, we know that you can touch. We know that you can heal. You know, God, that you can, hallelujah, and we know it, because your word says so, Lord Jesus. Said, by your stripes we are healed. We're going to believe you, Lord Jesus, according to your holy word. Lord, keep us, hallelujah, day by day, hallelujah, every move we make, every step we take, Lord God. Let us be mindful of you, God, knowing that we don't do this on our own, except, Lord God, you give the strength and the might. Oh, God, we say thank you. We can't do nothing apart from you, Lord. And that we don't want to do, Lord God. As we reach you, God, day by day, we ask you for your leadership. God, remember those that are desiring the filling of the Holy Ghost. God, you're the giver. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, you are, Lord. Many might need jobs, Lord. Oh, God, so many prayers need to be answered, but you can answer, Lord God, the prayers. We do thank you for being the mighty God that thou art. Oh, God, and we thank you, Lord God, not today, Lord God, in the mighty way. Your servants, Lord God, need you, Jesus. And we say thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We just thank God this morning for all things. We thank God for a bishop. We thank God for a bishop standing in the gap. Hallelujah. Down for the years. Preaching, teaching, laboring in the vineyard. Hallelujah. Touch many souls. Hallelujah. And many lives have been changed. And we thank God for the men of God. We thank God for our co-pastor working diligently alongside our bishop. Hallelujah. As they labor together, we ask you to continue to pray for their families and pray for them. God will continue to keep them on the straight and narrow so they will bring forth and never change, how never compromise, how in the word of God. We thank God for the minister of staff holding up their hands in ministry. We thank God for our faithful Elder Trevor Bassell, our minister Vega, our church mother, Mother McCullough, our spiritual mother, Mother Nellie Davis, to our mother Coaz. To all the mothers in the house this morning, we thank God for all the missionaries, the brothers, the sisters, the deacons, the children, the guests. We thank God for you and you this morning. Yes. We thank God for our young people Amen. in the household of faith this morning. Hallelujah. Our weekly schedule is as follows. Every Sunday morning, we have church school at 9.30. And the brothers, they start at 9 a.m. So you can bring encourage the men to come out and meet these classes. They're having some wonderful teachings, I was told. And we thank God for we see the fruit. Yeah. Our morning worship starts at 11.45 a.m. And this afternoon we'll be going to Brooklyn. The address is in your bulletin for those that are driving and those that need a way of transportation. The church van will be leaving at 4 p.m. And we're going to fellowship with our Bishop Webb and his uh, congregation. And we always worship together. So we ask that one way we go out and support our Bishop as we go to our, our Bishop Webb in Brooklyn. On Tuesday, we have midday prayer. The doors of the church will be open at 12 noon for prayer on Tuesday. And Wednesday is the official day of consecration, followed by a prayer deliverance service at 7 p.m. On trimester 5 is in session on Wednesday. Uh, on Friday, we have our praise team rehearsal at 6.30. Also, uh, those that are involved with the Christmas program, the Christmas uh, play, the rehearsal would be on Friday also right after the praise team. So we ask if you're involved in the program for Christmas, you come out for rehearsal on Friday. Saturday we have our trimester two Bible class and that's at 9.30 a.m. followed by a food distribution program at 11 a.m. 
uh, for upcoming events. We have Sunday, December 18th. We have our annual Christmas celebration and our attire is black and red. And um, the, it's presented by the uh, youth and the school ministries. And um, we ask that right after the morning meeting that we'll meet with our first lady. We're just going to work on the menu because we know we always do potluck. We all bring a dish and we share we, as we uh, continue our fellowship in the back on that day. Uh, also for upcoming events, uh, Sunday, December 25th is our Christmas day and our Christmas uh, service for that day will start at 10 a.m. So on uh, Christmas Sunday, we do have morning service, but it starts at 10 a.m. We ask that you mark that on your calendar. Uh, also on Saturday, December 31st, which are, is our New Year's Eve watch night service, it's uh, 9.30 is prayer, followed by our service at 10 p.m and the uh, colors are to be announced. Uh, also, uh, right after uh, First Lady meet with the team for the uh, Christmas celebration on the 18th, we'll be meeting with the nurses unit uh, right after that. On Saturday, uh, we talk about the New Year's Eve service. Uh, also, by way of reminder, if you're paying your tithes and giving an offering using your debit or credit card, we ask that you Fill out your envelope prior to Vassar's going around. Just enclose your name, the amount, and you can turn it into any one of the ushers. It does expedite the process, so the finance committee could be in the service. And they would greatly appreciate that. Also, we continue with our daily prayer band. Um, those that are calling in, the, service, the prayers God has been working. Then we have prayers from 6 to 6.30, Monday to Friday. And yes. the telephone number and the access code is in your bulletin. We ask that you're calling. You can stay on the line joining the prayer, or you can also leave your prayer request and they'll be prayed over. And we thank God for moving. Uh, we we'll also continue to pray for those that we haven't seen. We thank God for um, Mother Scott. God is healing her. Moving. All right. We also thank God for our We are the Spirit of God this morning. You may have to see the presence of the Lord. We said that thank God. To, amen. We invite. Amen. Thank God for those that are tuning in. Amen. On this television broadcast. And we're so happy. Praise God. To come to you live. And amen. Here at 216 11. Barry Boulevard. When we, we are on our way to heaven and we're enjoying the trip. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank you for coming in and tuning in. We, going to be coming on the app at least a couple times a month and, and just want to, you to join in with us and yes. amen and, and just come into the blessings because this is a day of blessings. Yes. Amen. 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 Send the, the first lady, co-pastor, this church. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Send the honor. Praise God. Our leaders. Praise God. Our elders and evangelists and missionaries and our mothers. Praise God this morning and just thanking God. Are you happy to be here? Amen. Amen. If you're happy in your Lord, clap your hands. Amen. If you're happy in your Lord, you really want to show it. Just hold your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. We're, we're going to write into the word today. And we're going to call your attention today from 2 Kings, the sixth chapter of 2 Kings. Praise God is where we'll be coming from today and maybe this evening too because we go out this evening. Praise God. But uh, take your Bibles very quickly and amen. Turn to 2 Kings, the sixth chapter. Praise God. And the first verse. There's so much good uh, word and nuggets that's in this scripture here today. Praise God that the Lord has placed upon my heart to share with you today. Amen. And we're going to read the first seven verses, and then I'm going to come after that and try to break down, you know, what we're talking about today and our subject matter. Amen. Second Kings, the sixth chapter, first verse, and it says, The sons of the prophet said unto Elijah, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Praise God. And let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take hence every man a beam, and let every and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, 
go with thy servant. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they had come to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was filling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where well, fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down the stick and cast it in hither. And the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to me. And he put it out in his hand and took it. Praise God. Going back into consideration as we look, amen, at that fifth or sixth verse. But as one was filling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where well, fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down the stick and cast it in hither. And the iron did swim. Amen. Taking into consideration, I want to just talk just a little bit from the day from the, uh, a couple questions, amen, that I uh, want you to think about today. Where did I lose it, and how can I get it back? Talk, sir. Come on. Where did I lose it, and how can I get it back? You know, sometimes we lose some things, and, and uh, we're looking for it for days and can't find it. I don't know if that ever happened to you, but it happened All the time, to me. Uh, we just uh, finished last year. We had a, a few uh, of our leaders in here who, amen, uh, got their chaplaincy license. And I was one of them. I was in the class and amen. I received my chaplaincy license. And uh, along with your badge, you get a card. And I had a uh, place, amen, my card somewhere. Could find my badge, but I couldn't find my car. And I went for months and months looking for my my you know my car and couldn't find it. Uh -huh. But you know God is a good God. Yeah. And you know you could talk to him with just about anything ain't going on in your life. Yes. Uh -huh. You can. You know, I, I brought it to the Lord. I got real serious with the Lord. I said, Lord, where is where, where, where is my car? Where is it? Where is it? Said, Could you please show me my car? And I just sat quietly before him. How many know you have to be still? As a passage of scripture and, and uh, Psalms, uh, be still. Uh, Psalm 46 and 10. It says, be still and know that I am God. And when I got still and quiet before him, the Lord says, go back to your desk. Amen. And pull out the drawer where you normally, amen, uh, put your files and stuff at. And take your time. Take your time. And look through each one of those files. And you're going to find the card. Do you know the first couple files I looked at? Guess what my card was? Uh, I had pulled it out like a, <laughs> literally like a thousand times. Praise God. And finally, I pinpointed because God. Amen. Want his people, yes. amen, to be up on everything. Yes, and he don't want you to lose anything That's that right. he does for you. Come on. In right. our scripture here is full with nuggets. Here we have, in the first verse, we have uh, the sons of the prophets. Mm -hmm. That was prophets during that particular time. And uh, these prophets, they, they directed the lives of kings. Kings that uh, would, would uh, listen to the voice of the prophet was blessed kings. Uh, they was blessed uh, because the prophet, God would give the, the word to the prophet. And the prophet was given to the king. And if you was a godly king, you listened to the council. If you was an ungodly king, you did not listen to the council. And you ended up falling by the wayside. Well, they had, he had sons. The prophet had sons. They would come and they would sit, amen, under the feet of the prophet. Amen. And then a school was developed. The school of the prophets. They had a school of the prophets in three places. They had one in Bethel. They had one in Jericho. And they had one in Gilgal. Uh, they, they, they would get the training and teaching. 
That's why today we need training and we need teaching. That's right. Especially if you call yourself a prophet. Uh, we have a lot of people going around that are prophets, but they are not trained and developed. They're not sitting in anybody's class. They're not coming to anybody's school. They're not learning anything. They're just doing things out of their own spirit, uh -huh. out of their own mind, without any training. All right, and it's important that if you're going to operate in the kingdom of God, you need to be trained. Because I don't want nobody preaching to me that's not know what they're talking about. Well, you said One that. of the most dangerous things that you could ever have is have an ignorant preacher. Uh, because you have an ignorant preacher, you're going to have an ignorant church. Right. Uh, Can I get a witness in here now? Yeah. Now don't y'all leave me right now. So praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. But you, we all need training, especially ministers. Wow. Yes. That's why I don't want to listen to a minister that uh, that's not... Amen. It's going to equip me and give me the necessary. Don't play with me. Right. Amen. I, 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 listen, would you want to go to a doctor and you go to the doctor, you sit up in a chair. Amen. He's got to operate on you and he tell you, well, you know, I just started yesterday. <laughs> I, I, you know, I've seen some videos on how to take this out. And if you just have a little patience with me, we, you know, we, we'll make it on through. No, no. <laughs> You're not going to operate on me. Come on. That's just like a preacher that's, that, that's going to have no home training, no home church, floats from place to place, follow after the happenings of what's going on, follow behind the popular preachers. Praise God. Hallelujah. But not get trained. All they, all they want is their gifts to be in operation. But I tell you, gifts without character is no good. Thank you for the two claps this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You got to have character with what you're doing. You can sing good, but do you know how to get along with your husband? Oh my. Oh my. Got mighty quiet in here right now. Praise God. I don't care how good you can sing and how good you can shout and how good you can preach, but after your preaching, do you have a life behind your preaching? Come on. And I find a lot of today people don't have a life. Let me, let me, let me move on. He was training these men, these young prophets that came to him. He was training them. And it was in a school. The school, the school of the prophets. And it got to the place where the schools began to get too, the, the, the place where they was meeting began to get too small. People began to come and they was getting training. So they, in the second verse, it says, let us go, we pray you unto Jordan, that we, to, to the Jordan, and that we may take hence every man a beam, a log, that yes. we get some logs together, and make us a place where we could come, and we could, we could worship together, we get training together. Yes. All the schools may be closed down, we can have one large facility where we could just come and just learn the things that we need to learn. Because, amen, if you're going to be, especially if you're going to be a prophet, amen, you've got to know when to prophesy and when not to. Right, amen. amen. Praise God. Right. you got to know when to do what at what time. Uh -huh. Amen. You don't just hop up and start doing things, praise God, without following direction. Can I get a witness in this house? Yeah. Praise God. And uh, the man of God says, uh, and let's go to the third verse. He said, the second verse said, go ye. Amen. In other words, uh, this was Elijah. This was Elijah the prophet. Amen. That had taken over from Elijah because the mantle had been passed to him. Uh, because he was dedicated. And he, the scripture says he washed, amen, the hands of Elijah. He was, he was, he was you following after him. Because Elijah came along, praise God, while he was, Elisha was plowing in the field and was plowing with 12 yokes of oxen. And Elijah said, come on, follow me. And he says, well, listen, let me go back to my family. He says, if you're going to go, you better come on, go with me. So he went back to his family, killed those for yoke of oxen, fed his family, and began to follow Elijah. And he followed Elijah. He followed him and followed him and followed him until God got ready to take Elijah up 
Praise God. When he took Elijah up, the mantle fell on Elijah. And Elijah did, amen, twice as many miracles as Elijah. Elijah did about 16, but Elijah did 32 miracles. Why? Because he followed, amen, in the footsteps of his leader. The third verse. And one said, be content, I pray thee, go uh, with thy servant. In other words, prophet, uh, we don't want to go by ourselves. Uh, we're going to be building on this, but we want you to go with us. And I think that's a very good thing, because sometimes we need our leaders around. Amen, because things get out of hand sometimes. Praise God, hallelujah. And he answered, I will go. In other words, I, I'll go with you. For first. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they was cutting down wood. Uh -huh. Now they had to cut down the wood to, 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 to supply the logs, praise God, to, you know, to, to get the building together. Praise God. And I find out that when you're getting ready to move out from your old place and begin to get into a new place, there's always some difficulty that's trying to stop you from where God wants you to be. Because I believe God is a progressive God. And I don't want to be in the same place I was last year. Amen. Praise God. I believe every year I ought to be moving up just a little bit more. I don't know about y'all, but I, 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 I get upset just going around the bush. <laughs> Praise God, yes. I don't want to be going around the bush all the time. I, I want to see some action. Uh, thank you for, uh, hallelujah. Thank you for a few amens. Praise God. Some people don't want to move. They don't want to go nowhere. Amen. They're satisfied. They're even satisfied the way things are. I'm not satisfied. I think any child of God should never get to complacent and get satisfied. Can I get a witness in here? That's why most of our churches are dead. Because people are satisfied. They're satisfied with the same old, same old, same old. Same old. But uh, uh, listen, when you follow God, there ought to be some action. It should be. It should be. There ought to be somebody getting something to listen. Uh -huh, uh -huh. In my life, I see it. Praise God. I ain't waiting on nobody else because God is moving in my life. I don't know about you, but God is moving in my life. And I see action in my life. Amen. Praise God. Y'all still there?